All right. We're on uh, this lesson. Let me get back to the lesson number. Principal parts of verbs. Lesson 29, principal parts. And so all this lesson is doing, as the last question was asked, is applying these verbs that are irregular. These Some of these verbs are irregular. And there's some of them are pretty common verbs. So uh, is the lesson that we have down here is an application of those irregular verbs. All right. So you guys have any problem translating this? All right. Uh, Benjamin, can you take the first one down to down to noon down there? The first four words. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, just to the uh, was the semicolon or whatever. Yeah, to the to the net. Well, go down to where my cursor is. Can you see the cursor flashing on the screen? Yes, sir. Noon. Okay, the first four words. Epan auto ohoi yudaioi. The Jew said to him. The Jew said to him. Okay. All right, if you want to go ahead and go on down to the period all the way down to finish the sentence, that's fine with me. Go ahead. Okay. Noon, ignokamen hati daimonium. A case. Uh, I said, now we have known that you have a demon. Okay. And so, have known. What tense was that? Ignokamen. Uh, the perfect tense? Yes, so the perfect is you you knew it and you still know it. So you say we've we've got we've got knowledge. We we knew that and we still know it. So it's con it's knowledge that they had in the past and they still have it. I think in the Bible they usually translate it in English as we know you have a demon, right? We know. That's how they usually translate it. Yes, that's true. But the Greek perfect tense, uh it's a little more strong. It's a little stronger. It's we knew it in the past and we and we still know it. Right. How would you say that? <laughs> we know. That's how oh, that's, you yeah. translate in English. I don't know of a better way to translate in English. The English doesn't get the full thrust of that perfect tense. They, they're claiming they, they knew it in the past and they're still knowing it. Okay. And we, we know and we still know. And that probably doesn't flow very well in English. So we knew in the past and we still know that you have a demon. All right. Of course, that's a lie, of course. Yeah. That's it's blasphemous lie too. All right. All right. Any, any questions or comments? All right. Can you take what I'll highlight here down to the end of that line on this, and that'll be another sentence there, Bobby. Okay. Abram, Ape Thin, Ape Ka Oi Pro Bete, Ta. And I got uh, Abraham and the prophets died. And, and the prophets died? Right. Okay. And so they died. Okay. I see. I guess we go down to here for the next one. Uh, all the way. All right. If you are there, Benjamin, go down. I guess down to there. Apecrithe Jesus. Ha. Peter mu doxatse me. Jesus answered, My father glorifies me. Okay. And so my father glorifies me. And I don't know. I, I didn't look this up. I think it's right out of the text of the Bible or pretty close to it. 
right down all the way down to there, if you would, Bobby. Okay. Look, a. I'm having problems talking. So, look, a. A. Genos, Kate, Alton, Ego, Day, Haydang, Alton, Kaiton, Logon, Altu, Tayro. Ye have not known him, but I knew him and his word. Okay. That's what happened. Okay, now, in his word, I what? Tayro. Oh, keep. I, I didn't translate it. Okay, I got you. Keep. And his word, his word, uh, I keep. Okay, now let, let's look at these two words. Uh, Ignocate, Ignocate is to know, but epigenos, that's from Gnosko. Epigenosko is to really know, but this is elementary knowledge. Right. And it's knowledge gained from experience. Okay. But the other word down there that you translated no is oida. It's a different word. And so right here, I want to, we're going to look at those two words because there's some subtlety of meaning there. U, and of course the kappa is there because we got a vowel. U is an absolute negation. May, let me see if I can find May down here somewhere. Oh, I don't see a May. Mu Ada May, okay. I uh, don't see one down here. Okay, let me type it out. That word right there is a conditional negation. Let me let me put it in a symbol form there. That right there is a conditional negation. That may. That's no or not. And o right here is no or not but this one's an absolute negation and so right here is a conditional negation and it usually goes with uh, your tenses we hadn't covered yet or the case the moods we hadn't covered yet be subjunctive and imperative and whereas o goes with the indicative mood more almost exclusively okay all right, so we don't have a may in here because we haven't had the tenses for it yet. You do not know, you don't you don't have a ele, even elementary experience of him. You don't know him, and this is an elementary knowledge. And if he put epigenos kate, uh, epi, the preposition epi is upon, this would be knowledge upon knowledge. So he uses the elementary knowledge. You don't even have elementary knowledge. You don't know him in an elementary sense. Okay. But I know different word, him, and the word of him I keep, I guard. It's guarding what you presently possess, Tehreo, Tehreo is. All right, so we're going to look at these two words here before we get away. I want to look at them as, as you see a lesson here uh, in kind of looking at the different words for no, and it gets lost in the English translation. Both are translated no. Right. And the English uh, translation doesn't catch the thrust of it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come over here to the grammar. And there's your Gnosko. Let me, let me get out of it here. I'm sorry. Let me get out of it. I'll get back to my Roberts. All right. Can Oida also have the sense of I hear him? Uh, it's the idea of seeing. It can be the, the idea of seeing something. Right. Well, let's look at it right in here in just a minute. There's Gnosko. To learn to know, to come to knowledge, get knowledge, become known. Knowledge grounded in personal experience. <clears throat> now, here's a whole series of lessons uh, from the Old Testament and New Testament. To know God is critical, right? 
And you see this in the prophecy of Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, which is quoted twice in the book of Hebrews. You see, they shall all know him from the least to the greatest. And a Jew could get into the kingdom of God, God's kingdom, by being born of Jewish parents and the boy being circumcised on the eighth day. And one other condition, if he happened to be the firstborn, he had to be redeemed. But other than that, they just automatically were in the kingdom. They didn't know one thing about God when they're eight days old. No knowledge whatsoever of God. They had to learn to know God. They had to be taught to know God, right? And that's in Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. If you look at the thrust of it, he says there's going to be a difference between the old covenant and the new covenant. In the old covenant, you had to be taught to know God after you entered the covenant. And in the new covenant, the New Testament, you had to learn to know God before you got into the covenant. Mm, yeah. That makes sense what we're saying. Yes. And if you put those, those that passage in Jeremiah 31, which is quoted twice in the book of Hebrews, uh, it's been quoted in its entirety in one passage and partially quoted in another passage. I think it's the 8th and 10th chapters of Hebrews, if my memory is right. But my point is, this is knowledge gained or grounded in personal experience. Now that's our word here, the first word. They don't, they haven't, they haven't come to know God. And that was what Jeremiah was talking about. And you see the idea of knowing God is if you go through the Old Testament, you can see a whole bunch of passages. Somebody said, it is said to know God. And so they have come to be intimate with God, a grounded personal experience. Now I'm going to go to another, I'm going to go to, that's Gnosko, we're going to go to Oida that you were asking about, Benjamin. And so that's on page 215 in this. Okay. Here. There's a bunch said about Oida in my notes here. This is in Thayer and some other sources. Oida is actually a perfect tense verb. So it is the, to have come to know God, okay? It's an obsolete form of, of Ido, okay? From that obsolete verb, right? It takes the place of Horao because it is a, it is a, verb in this category we're looking at today. It has uh, the uh, forms that uh, are not not, uh, not complete, okay? All right, so right here, it carries the idea of perceiving with the eyes. Remember, it comes from Iden, Iden. And uh, Perception, as denoted by the animal, is conceived completely permits the sensuous element to, uh, to be forgotten and abides merely in activity of the soul. Cons conversely, oida, which is a perfect form, strictly means I have acquired the knowledge of, and regularly translated I know in English. I'm in possession of previously acquired knowledge. See? That's what Moodle says of it. It's an irregular verb in the perfect active. That's our, what we have here. This is the file that I sent you, fellas. Okay, I, I keep adding to it. I, I'll add a note to it here and here and there, and I send it back to you again. But that's it. Is the difference here is this is an acquired knowledge of, of something, and uh, so let's go back now. That's the word that Jesus used for himself. Okay. So get out of it. Yeah, any questions before I go, drop out of this? So is the kind is the difference kind of that's being made here is they're acquiring the knowledge about him, but he actually has the knowledge. Yes, they haven't even they have, they have no experience with God. 
they're not they don't know God, but Jesus has has an acquired knowledge. He has knowledge of God. Okay. Any comments there? All right. I hope you can get back in. All right, let me let me do this. Share screen. Let's go back to Robert's grammar. Okay. I hope we got back to it. I'm jumping around, but I say, is that you see Robert's grammar on the screen? No, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. All right. Now, what we have here, we have Gnosko right here, and they don't have any. They don't have any. Uh, experience what's in the acquired knowledge at all, other than elementary knowledge. He doesn't use the, the, the there's two forms of gnosko. There's gnosko, which is a very elementary knowledge, and epigonosko, which is uh, a deeper knowledge, okay? They don't even have an elementary knowledge of him, and it's absolute denial of it. But I, I have this experience. I have, I don't, I have, they have no experience with him. They don't know God. But I have, uh, and it's oida here, see. I have known this, and I have this, this knowledge from uh, the depth of, let's go back and see oida again. I'm sorry. I don't know exactly how that was worded. I won't have to go back. And we're going to get it again. I hate that. Previously acquired knowledge. I know. It's down below it. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, not Thayer's uh, definition, but uh, it is, I have acquired the knowledge of, and uh, I have acquired the knowledge of. So I have acquired this knowledge, and it's previously acquired knowledge, okay? Whereas you haven't any kind of knowledge of it, see? You don't even have a, an elementary knowledge of it. So when, when we have epigenosco, that is a deeper knowledge. Yes, that's a deeper knowledge. So we would say we would use oida. No, oida is a different position. I know, but I'm saying if we were if we were talking, would we say, uh, you know, uh, I have epigenosco. Uh, I'm trying to make the reference to the two words. Oh, it is there is perfect. It's a form of perfect. I have acquired the knowledge of. And okay, I may, I'm not making myself clear. So. The Nosco is knowledge based on personal experience. Okay, all right, I got you. Epigenos could be just okay. Oida is more like it's a, it's in your mind. You've right. experienced okay. it. That, it's, it's it's an abiding concept in your mind. Okay, that helps. It's so ingrained right in your thinking that you become it becomes part of your thinking. Think of it that right. way. That's oida. And <clears throat> so what we're saying here, there's that subtlety. They don't even have an elementary experience of God experience mm -hmm. or. Whereas Jesus is saying, my knowledge is in my mind completely. It's so thorough. My knowledge of God is so thorough of the Father that is, is uh, well, it would be the Father that's talked about in the prior sentence, is so thorough that it's in, ingrained in my thinking. Does that make sense? See the difference? Yes. Sir. Now, you can take Gnosko, that's an elementary experience. Of, Knowledge of my experience. And you, you put FB upon the preposition FB at the beginning of it, it becomes a new word, but it's from that same root word, gnosko, and epigonosco is a fuller, deeper knowledge. In Second Peter, he goes back and forth between 
osco and epigonosco, and also the noun forms of those two words. And the translations don't make the distinction. <laughs> and what we see there is he's contrasting those two forms of knowledge, the deep knowledge element. We think of like milk of the word in, the, in Hebrews 5 and meat of the word. Epi, epigonosco be like meat and gnosco be like milk of the word. Does that make better sense? Say that again. In uh, we see the milk and the meat of the word in uh, Hebrews five. Did I say Ephesians? I probably said Ephesians. Hebrews five. And milk and meat. And uh, gnosco is like milk, and epigonosco is like meat. That would okay. I got you. Illustrate it. Okay. I'm not saying those words are used there in, in that passage, but that's the concept. So Jesus is saying you don't even have an elementary experience of God, experiential knowledge, because they've never known God. And I think that's the thrust there. They had never come to know God. But there were Jewish people who had come to know God. And I would say that people like Anna the prophetess and Simeon who, who uh, blessed Jesus, and others like them, and John the Baptist, and John the Baptist's parents, probably both, probably both of them, the way they mentioned, they had a they had a knowledge of God. They had come to know God. So they had gone beyond what they got with their birth. They actually had this knowledge with that come to know God by experience. Okay, and not so Pentecost experience. Experience by virtue of having lived as God wanted them to live. Yeah. Alba didn't get off too much and spend too much time. No, I appreciate that. Benjamin, you got any questions? Uh, no, I think that's good. All right. So I think Bobby read last. So, Benjamin, I'm going to have you a lengthy read. Today. I'll highlight it there down to the, the next line below. Can you see what I've highlighted? No, at the current moment, I just have a gray screen. Okay. Do you have a screen yet? No, it's just gray. All right. Let's see if we get a screen now. You have one now? Yes. All right. Can you see what I've highlighted? Uh huh. All right. Can you read that and then translate it for us? That in parentheses is just your verb. It's the verb for what that comes from. Okay. Abraham Egalia Egalias Sata Idain Tain. Kemeran ten emen. Kai eden, kai ekare. Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw and rejoiced. Okay. See so, now, this oida we talked about is a form of eden. So Abraham, he didn't just have Gnosko knowledge, he had Oida knowledge. So Abraham did, and he rejoiced at knowledge see, to see. To, and it's to see, it's to see with the eye of the mind because you, you've gone, you've so imbibed this. Uh, let me illustrate this. You fell in love with your wife, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that you love your wife deeply. And I'm sure both of you do. Each of his own wife, of course, deeply. And that uh, you, when you grew to develop this great love, you probably began to visualize her, her just her image, her picture, or seeing her, what she looked like in your mind when you weren't with her. That's what I'm saying. And, and so this is like that. It's a, it's a, to develop this in the eye of the mind. Now, 
So he walked to see, and that's how he translated to see, see. To see with the eye of the mind the day. So Abraham visualized in his mind the day of Jesus' day. Okay. Now look at this word, Emain. This is an emphatic form. Normally the epsilon won't be on it. And it'll be in it won't have an accent mark on it. But this has an epsilon and it's still the same same pronoun. If you drop the epsilon and no accent mark, it'd be main. Move a to no. But this with the with the epsilon on it makes it emphatic. Hmm. My day and it's and so it's an emphatic form of my. And and he saw and, and you know, how did you translate the last part? Benjamin, how did you translate the last three words? I said, I saw and rejoiced. And rejoiced. So he saw it, and it's the form of this word over here. Remember, it's irregular. That's, a, that's part of our problem. It's an irregular verb. And so he saw and he rejoiced. Okay. Any okay. questions there? <clears throat> so the, the, my day, see. Not just my day, but my day. That's kind of rage. Of course, that was what we'd have to do in English. Okay. Um, uh, you got a long reading here. Okay. Let me highlight it for you. Hopefully, there's a, there's a bunch there. And well, I was hoping I was going to get those three words. <laughs> Okay. Hey, Pan, un oe aud de oe. Ros alton. Am I reading right? Alton, yeah. In de cote ete utpo excess kai abram abram e orakas. That's best I can do with it. OK, let me see. Therefore, therefore, the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old and you have seen Abraham. John 8, 57. You've seen Abraham? I think that's right. That's a question. You have seen? And have you yeah. seen Abraham? You have seen Abraham? Yeah, I got a question mark in mind. <laughs> that's, a, that's a problem. They didn't, they didn't acknowledge his deity. Yeah, OK. Okay, and that's almost like uh, Pentecost, Pente Pentecost, Dakota. That's yeah. okay. Pente Pentecota, fifty now, years. Pente is five. Pentagon is five sided. So. Okay. So you're not you're not yet fifty years old, and you you've seen Abraham. Abraham, of course, been dead quite some time. Okay, over over fifteen hundred years. Yeah, nearly two thousand years. Okay, whenever this was said, probably around two thousand years. <clears throat> All right. Huh. Any comments there? Now you uh, like with me. I inserted the word "o." Oh. Not yet fifty years. So, well, does that come with the number? Uh, not yet 50 years is. Uh, yeah, not yet 50 years. Yeah, OK. We didn't have to do that. Well, we're going to have another read because there's Benjamin right there to the end of that sentence. Well, you're going to give him that long one, make it long. I'm going to give that to Benjamin, this one. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Pen Altois Jesus. Amen, amen, lego, humin. Prim, Abraham, genestai, ego, emi. Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, before Abraham came, or became, or was, I, even I am. Okay. This this had to had to hit him hard. 
So Jesus replied to him. I think this right out of the text of the Bible. John 8. Amen, amen, lego hupin. It's verily, verily, I say unto you. <clears throat> now I have a, a commentary, and he just states it, and he doesn't document it, but he said, amen, amen. Those two words, when they were put together, only a king would use those words, all right? Or some ruler would use those two words. But I find it, I'm repeating it, but I don't have any further documentation on it. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, I suspect there could be something to it. That's why I repeat it. But what kind of bothers me is, Amen, Amen is really, Amen is really a Hebrew word, right? So it would, wouldn't be something that would be in the Greek language, that we should find it very much in the Greek. Of course, it could be among the uh, people who spoke either Aramaic or spoke Hebrew. I think it's in both languages, All right? But I could believe it, of course, Jesus is a king. So it's verily, verily, South translated. Amen, 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 amen. I say to you, it's firm, it's firm, and you double it up and repeat it. It's emphatic. See, it's emphatic form. Now, this expression, amen, amen, lego amen, is only found in the book of John. Nowhere else is it found, and it's only said uttered by Jesus. Nobody else to use that expression. Mm. Right. So you can trace it out and you see what I'm saying, okay? Before Abraham came to be, I ego me, and that's emphatic. And why, why, what is the significance of that? And it's significant, you know, All right? What it is, when Moses was at the burning bush, what did God say his name was? I am. So I am. I am essential. And so he uses that expression, I am. And that is a verb form of the word that's translated Jehovah in the American Standard, sometimes in the King James. Probably the, the, the new scholars think it might have been really pronounced Yahweh, but I'm not going to get in a hassle over that. <clears throat> I'll go with Jehovah. It's all caps Lord in the King James Version most of the time. But there's a few times that the King James translates to Jehovah. Okay. So is Jesus claiming to be the figure in the bush? I think he's claiming to be deity because uh, it's it's a verb. It's from a, the Hebrew is from a verb which means I I exist because I exist. That's the that's the verb I am have sent me, and that's that's the word. And it's, it's a verb form of the word for Jehovah. The word Jehovah is one who exists because he exists. Self-existent being. And that only, only a self-existent being could have created the universe. Does that make sense what I'm saying? So Jesus used ego and amen. Emphatic that becomes emphatic because Amy has it's already has I am, and then this is I I am. It's a, doubles it up, and anytime you have ego with a verb, it's like ego is emphatic. Does that help a bit? Yes, sir. And so I, I believe that's at the burning bush. It's uh, what the fourth chapter or somewhere thereabouts of Exodus. All right. Again, but, but we let uh, we let Benjamin start off anyhow. So that's kind of turnabout's fair play. That's mine right there. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, Rand, um, lethus balain ep aton, Jesus de excel excel ben actun heru. Therefore, they lifted up a shaped stone to throw to him, but Jesus went out of the temple. They're not throwing to him. 
It's FE. Oh, uh, to throw. On him to on to or against. They were going to try. They were going to stone him. Okay, why were they going to stone him? If they're going to. Because okay. he just claimed to be deity. <laughs> well, I mean, and they understood what it meant. Okay. Does that make sense now? Well, it's they lean as uh, Harris. Uh, Aries infinitive. Throw, throw something and throw stones upon him. To throw. Oh, I, I see now. <laughs> I don't know what I did. <laughs> they, 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 they were they were planning on stoning him. Is what they yeah. were planning on doing. Well, how would you how do you translate it? <laughs> okay, how how'd you get Aaron? How did you translate that? Let's start it off. Uh. uh they lift. They lifted. They lifted up. They lifted up. They picked up. Picked up. Therefore, they picked, be best. They picked, yeah, they picked up. Okay. Picked up stones to cast upon him to throw it at it. Throw upon him. Okay. Throw up upon him to to so they were going to stone him. Okay. But Jesus, he did what? Went out of the temple. Went out of the temple. He passed out of the temple. It wasn't his time to die. Okay. He's going to have to die on the cross. To fulfill prophecy. And they're just not going to get to stone him. Now, they couldn't start stoning him if he went into a crowd. Because they hit the other people, they'd be responsible for injuring them. Does that make sense? Right. So he might have just moved into the crowd and moved on out. So they, they can't do anything. But he just claimed to be dead. He claimed to be Jehovah. Now the word Jehovah is that word of which from which this verb, the Hebrew verb back in uh, at the burning bush uh, came from. Okay. It's a verb form of that word for Jehovah. One ex exists because I exist. I am, it's I am, I am that I am. American Standard Translation. I think King James may render it that way too. Okay. Any questions? I'm going to go on to the next lesson and we'll see how much time we only have about five or six minutes. Right. I guess I got off too much on this other stuff, making an application of it. But I didn't think it hurt for us to see it. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Now, let me let me do this. You can take verily, verily, I say unto you, every time it's this exactly the same expression. And it's that form every time. I mean, I mean, I go, I mean, verily, verily, I say unto you. So Jesus is affirming, double in it up, this is the truth. So. He is claiming to be, be deity. Before Abraham came to be, I am. I exist. I, I even I existed. So he would have to be either an angel or a deity to have existed before Abraham came into being. Does that make sense? Has to be claiming to be one or the other. But by using ego, I mean, He's actually claiming to be Jehovah. The word Jehovah applies to all three persons of the Godhead, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. All three. And there are a number of passages in the Old Testament, several passages that are, have Jehovah in them, and they're quoted in the New Testament and applied to Jesus. There's two or three passages, three or four, that uh, have the word Jehovah in them, they're quoted in the New Testament and applied to the Holy Spirit. I use these when I study with, with uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. Uh, that's what I use. I ask them, I, I, I set a trap for them basically. 
not mean spirited, but I set a trap, I say, would anybody that the Bible calls Jehovah be God? And they say, well, yes. Now the trap's been sprung now. Then I take and take their own translation, see? And I say, your own translation has the word Jehovah in, in a such and such passage back in Jeremiah or wherever. And uh, what the first passage I choose to use. And then I go, I usually use one out of Jeremiah first. And I take that passage and say, your translation here has Jehovah in it. And I believe that's correct. I tell them I believe it's right. And then I say, that passage is quoted over here in the New Testament applied to Jesus. And when we go to it in, in uh, either first or second Peter, I've forgotten where it is. And they have a bewildered look on their face whenever they do it. I say, you're, you, uh, you're denying what the Bible says, that Jesus is Jehovah. Jesus is, is God, he's deity. And they just, uh, and sometimes you just almost see a, like a terrified look in their face. And then I say, I can show you other passages where they're quotes from the Old Testament, quote New Testament applied to Jesus also. This is not just one, so you can't, can't take this passage say that's the only one because there's a bunch more. And I say, if you want me to give them to you, I'll give them to you. But you see, they believe and they're taught that the Watchtower materials is just as inspired as the New Testament. Did you know that? No, I didn't know. That's what they believe. Oh, yeah. And they believe that's, that's what they're taught. So they won't take a track from you and uh, but they'll, they'll try to sell you, if they can't sell it to you, they'll, they'll go ahead and give it to you, a copy of their material. But uh, they, they, they're they convinced that their they're present day people are just as inspired as the apostles. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so whatever they say, they've got to believe it. And so much for that. Any other questions for what I call all to it? Let's go to lesson 30. This is the third declension. This is new now. And I'm going to get out of this and go into one file I want you to see. All right, then we'll close down. All right. Information for students. In that information for students file, over here, I have the third declension nouns on it. That's on page five of that file. It's 28 page file. And you can go down and see the forms for them. And then the page number and sections in Robert's grammar where this is found. All right, all these pages. It goes through this third declension. It has a, and it has it, and it has some more material to come back to it again. And then it comes back to it again and uh, some more and it has some more so there's some gaps in here with other material between it this is uh, the third declension this of course has a, a masculine so it's masculine form this is feminine right here as you see your article and this is a neuter form right here and so you have different words and they'll fit in and there's different lessons where these are covered Okay, so this is your form. This is your uh, article. You have the article here. Article, 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 article. And this is how your uh, stem ends down in here. That's ending on your stem. That'll be not sigma or nothing over here. And if it has no, no ending, no, no sigma and none, it, uh, in the lexicons, it will give the nominative and the genitive form of the, of the word, okay? And the, of course, we're dealing with nouns here. And over here, there's your plural uh, articles, and there's your plural endings. That's how this is set up. Do you have any questions about it? There's your cases over here, all right? I wanted you to see that before we got away. So you can kind of use it. You can go to that 
that uh, right here. You could print out just this one page if you wanted to. Just have it right there in front of you. That might be helpful to you. Okay. This we'll get to this one, I believe, first. I think we're on page 222 is where we are. No questions? No, sir. 